Okay, so we're going to take a look at the point-slope form of the equation of the line. We've already looked at a couple of different forms of the equation of the line, one of them being um, our slope-intercept form. Let's do a quick review of that. Remember, slope-intercept looks like y equals mx plus b. And if you recall, the key thing about this form is that this y is by itself. That's how you know that you're in that form. And when you're in that form and the y is by itself, you can pull out the slope. It's going to be the number right in front of the x. And you can pull out the y-intercept. It's going to be the constant, the number that has um, no variable with it. So that's what slope-intercept form looks like. We also have standard form. And if you recall, standard form looked like ax plus by equals c. And there were two criteria for being in standard form. One criteria is that the x and the y are together. And the other criteria is that you have no fractions and no decimals. When you have both of those criteria met, then you are in standard form. So our point-slope form is just another form for writing the equation of a line. Both of these, your slope-intercept and your standard form, those are different forms for writing the equation of the very same line. And the same thing can happen here with our point-slope form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you where point-slope form comes from because it makes it easier to remember and it makes it easier to memorize. You're going to need to memorize all these different forms for the equation of line. You're going to have to have your slope-intercept form memorized, you're going to have to have your standard form memorized, and you're going to have to have your point-slope form memorized. So like I said, showing you where it comes from makes the memorization a whole lot easier, and it's easier to understand that point-slope form. So the first thing that I'm going to do is start with this formula for slope that you're familiar with. Subtract your y's on the numerator, subtract your x's on the denominator. And what I'm going to do is simply rearrange this formula for slope. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to clear out the denominator of this fraction. Remember your slope is a fraction, rise over run. And we've talked before about how to clear out fractions. What's making it a fraction is the denominator. And so to clear it out, all you have to do is multiply by that denominator. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to multiply this side by that denominator of x2 minus x1. And what I do on one side of the equal sign, I have to do on the other side of the equal sign, so I'll also, also multiply it by an x2 minus an x1. Markers not going to sit well. Let me get another marker here. And so like I said, if I multiply this side by an x2 minus an x1, what happens is, on this side, remember how you multiply fractions? Yeah, that's right. There's that silly little game symbol of mine that says when you multiply fractions, and x means multiplication, you're going to cancel on those diagonals, and then you're going to shoot straight across. So when I cancel on these diagonals here, this x2 minus x1 is going to completely cancel out with this x2 minus x1. So what I'm left with then is my x2 minus x1 times the m equal to my y2 minus y1. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remember that multiplication is commutative. And so remember, commutative means that I can reorder the way that I multiply. A 2 times a 3 is the same thing as a 3 times a 2. So I'm going to take this multiplication that's right here, where it's a parentheses times m, and I can switch that around and call it m times parentheses. So that's exactly what I'm going to do, so I'll switch it up, make it an m times the x2 minus the x1, leaving the other side alone. Now the last thing I'm going to do here for rearranging is I'm going to take a look at the fact that this equation is a pan balance. We've talked about the pan balance before. That in this pan is going to be my m times x2 minus x1. In this pan is going to be the y2 minus y1. The fulcrum in the middle of that pan balance is going to be this equal sign. Now if you picture a pan balance, can you take that pan and at this fulcrum in the middle, can you spin it around the fulcrum in the middle and keep it balanced? Sure, you absolutely can. It might teeter a little bit as it spins, but it'll level out and it'll balance. Can I spin it again around that fulcrum like this? Sure, now I might get a little bit dizzy, but it will stay balanced across this fulcrum. Teeter a little bit, but it'll level out. The reason I bring that up is because that's exactly what I'm going to do. Here's the fulcrum in the middle of the pan balance, so I can take this equation and I can just spin it around that equal sign. So this part can go over here, and this part can go over here, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to move this to this side, and I'm going to move this to this side. Now if you remember, this y2, that does not mean y squared. 
this x2 does not mean x squared. It simply means this is the x and this is the y that go to the second point. Same thing here. This is the x and this is the y that go to the first point. So if it's a matter of just lining things up, what I'm going to do is take the subscript off of this one and take its matching subscript off. When I do that, I have now created the point slope form of the equation of a line right there. The nice thing about this form is that you can identify your slope very easily. Slope is always going to be the m. And you can identify a point that's on the line. Now, the reason I left the subscripts on these two is because those are actually going to be numbers. This x1 will be a number. This y1 will be a number. The subscripts are off of these because this will be a variable as x. This will be a variable as y. So you can identify a point that's on the line. That point will be this x1, this y1, and that will give you the x and the y coordinates for that particular point on that line. So it's useful for being able to identify those parts of the line. You can put the point on there. You can use your slope as a counting tool to be able to graph the line. Or you can work backwards. And the point slope form is very useful to write the equation of the line. When you are given a point and a slope, and that's why it's called point slope form. If you're given a point and a slope, you just simply plug it into this point slope form, putting your point here and putting your slope right there. Or it can be used when you're given two points. you can write the equation of the line. Now that might be a little bit confusing because you might be looking at this going, no, wait a minute, I need to have a slope in order to put the slope right there. If I'm only given two points and I'm not given the slope, what am I going to do? But if you're given two points, can you calculate slope? Sure, you can use this formula for slope that we started with. And you can subtract the y's on the numerator, subtract the x's on the denominator, and then you'll have your slope and you'll have two points to choose from. So let's take a look at this and see um, how it works. Let me get through some examples here with you so you can see how handy this point slope form is. Now in each of these examples, we are going to write the equation of the line. given the specified conditions. And once we've written that equation, then we are going to transform it into slope-intercept form. Remember, that means get the y by itself. And then we're going to transform it into standard form. Which means we're going to get the x and the y together and get rid of the fractions and the decimals. So let's take a look at our first example here. And in this first example, we're going to be given a slope of 1 half. And we know that the line is going to pass through... point negative 4 comma 3. Now folks, you've heard me say it many, many times and it's absolutely true. The mathematicians are not creative at all. So if you are given a point and a slope, then of the three forms, point slope, slope intercept standard form, which one will you use? You'll use your point slope form because that's why we have point slope form if you're given a point and a slope. Now if you have something to memorize, the easiest way to memorize it is to write it down every single time that you use it and then plug your numbers in. That way, that's the easiest way to memorize it. I never had to make flashcards. I never had to stare at a paper and memorize. I just wrote that formula down every single time that I used it and then I plugged my numbers in. I ended up memorizing without even trying. So here is my um, point slope form of the equation of the lines. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Again, taking the subscripts off of each of these to remind me that they're going to stay as variables. So this y will stay as a variable, this x will stay as a variable. 
Now I'm going to plug my information in. This y1 comes from this y coordinate right here. This m is the slope that I'm told, one half. And this x1 comes from this x coordinate right here. Now at this point with point slope form, we do what I call cleanup. Cleanup simply means, well, I know that subtracting a negative is really adding a positive. So I know that this is really an x plus 4. And then over here, this is y minus 3. So in terms of writing the equation, given those specified conditions, here it is. This is my point slope form of the equation of the line. But if you recall, this, um, the directions had three parts. One was write the equation. We did that. But the next part said, let's take that equation and let's transform it into this slope-intercept form right here. Now remember, slope-intercept says get the y by itself. So I need to get this negative 3 out of the way. Also notice that when you compare this to slope-intercept, there's a parentheses here, there's no parentheses there. So I've got to clear out the parentheses. It doesn't matter whether you slide that negative 3 over first and then distribute through, or distribute and then slide the 3 over. It makes no difference. What I've noticed over the years, though, is people who slide that 3 over first, when they distribute, sometimes they have a bad habit of distributing all the way back to that 3, which you certainly don't want to do. So to keep myself from making that mistake, frequently what I will do is go ahead and distribute through first, 1 half times x, and then 1 half times 4. From there, now I will slide that 3 over, and I'm simply going to add a 3 to both sides to get rid of it. That gives me y equals 1 half x plus 5. The y is by itself. I have no parentheses. There we go. That's slope intercept form. But remember, there was a third part of the directions. The third part said, now let's turn that into standard form right here. Standard form, remember, says get the x and the y together. And make sure you don't have any fractions or decimals. Yet again, it doesn't matter which one you do first. You can clear out the fractions and then slide the x over here with the y. Or you can slide the x over first and then clear out the fractions. It really doesn't matter. Most people like to clear out the fractions first. So I'll do that first. Now remember, what's making this a fraction is the 2. So I'm going to multiply absolutely everything by that 2 to clear it out. So 2 times y will give me 2y. 2 times 1 half x, remember that will give me a 1x because these 2's will cancel out. That's why I multiplied by 2. And then 2 times 5 will give me 10. Looking a whole lot better because I don't have any fractions and decimals now. I just need to get the x and the y together. So I'm going to slide this x over here with this y. When I remove it, I'm going to subtract an x and subtract an x here. When I do that, that will give me a negative x plus 2y. Remember the sign in front is the sign that goes. That's the name tag. And this name tag is a positive 10. There we go. That's in standard form because we don't have any fractions or decimals. And we have our x and our y together. Both criteria are done. So this is how you take information when you're given a point and a slope and you put it into your point slope form. And then this is how you transform it into the other two forms. So let's practice that again. Let's try another one. We're going to have the very same directions that are going to say, let's take the given conditions, let's write the equation of the line, and then let's transform it. So in this second example, this time I'm given a slope of 6 fifths, and I know that it's passing through the point negative, mm, positive 4, negative 1. And I have the very same directions. I'm going to write the equation on the line, and then I'm going to transform it into slope-intercept and into standard form. So as we said before, if we're given a point and a slope, use that point-slope form. Knowing that I need to memorize it, I'm going to write it down every single time, and then I'm going to plug the information in. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Taking the subscript off of this one reminds me it stays as a variable. Same thing here. So now what goes in this spot is going to be the negative 1, the y-coordinate. What goes in here is the slope of 6 fifths. And what goes right here is going to be the x-coordinate of negative 4. Remember, with point slope, you just got to do a little bit of cleanup because you know subtracting a negative is really adding a positive. I don't necessarily need to distribute through the parentheses because point slope form has a parentheses in it. So there we go. That's point slope. But remember, the direction said, now let's take this and let's rearrange it and put it into our slope intercept form that you see right here. And remember, slope-intercept simply says, let's take that y and make sure that it's by itself. 
and let's make sure that we don't have a parentheses in here. And like I said, it doesn't matter if we slide the one and then distribute or distribute then slide the one. I will always distribute first to keep myself from distributing too far. So 6 fifths times x is 6 fifths x. 6 fifths times 4. Now remember, when you multiply fractions, like we said before, you're going to cancel on the diagonals and then you're going to shoot straight across. So 6 fifths times a 4 over 1, nothing will cancel on those diagonals. So when I multiply straight across, I get a 24 over 5. And a positive times a negative is a negative. So now the parentheses is gone. I just got to get the y by itself. So I'm going to subtract a 1 here, subtract a 1 here. And now remember when you add and subtract fractions, that's common denominator. So I have a negative 24 fifths minus a 1. Common denominator for these two will be a 5. So I'm going to turn this into a 5 over 5. And now when I have the common denominators, I'm going to combine up the numerators and keep that denominator. So the y is by itself, I have no parentheses, that slope intercept. But now the third part of the direction said, let's take this and turn it into standard form. Two criteria, let's get the x and the y together, let's clear out those fractions. And again, most people will clear out their fractions first, so I'll do that first. What's making it a fraction is this denominator here. To clear them out, I'm going to multiply everything by 5. Absolutely every single term gets multiplied by 5. So 5 times y is a 5y. 5 times 6 fifths, these will cancel. Remember, cancel those diagonals. And that's why I did it, because I wanted to get rid of that denominator. And here, these will cancel as well. I get a negative 29. So, no fractions anymore. Now, I just got to get the x and the y together. So, I'm going to take this 6x and slide it over here. Remember, when I move it across the equal sign, I do the opposite. Name tag in the front of this is negative. Name tag in front of this is positive. And the name tag in front of this is negative. There we go, that's standard form because both criteria are now met. Ta da! So that's how you write your equation in point slope form and transform it into a slope intercept and into standard form. So let's take a look at one more example here. Um, and in this example, we're going to be given a slope of zero. And this time, it's going to pass through the point 3, negative 2. But yet again, when I'm given a point and a slope, then that means I'm going to put it into point-slope form. So point-slope looks like y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So I'm going to make that a variable because the subscript is off. I'm going to make this a variable because the subscript is off. And now this y1 will become a negative 2 the m will become a 0, and this x here will become the 3. Remember the cleanup, subtracting a negative is really adding a positive. Now, even though it would be quite easy to go ahead and take this and multiply it by a 0, because 0 times anything is just a 0, and it would be quite easy to just go ahead and subtract a 2 on both sides. Um, my math lab seems to like for you to retain the parentheses whenever you're doing your point slope form. I think it's because point slope looks like this right here, and in that format you have a parentheses. So like I said, I believe that my math lab, I know it likes to retain the parentheses, and I think it's because that's what point slope looks like. However, Notice, like I said, it is very easy just to say that 0 times anything is just a 0, and then it's very easy to slide that negative 2 over. So back in my day, we were always taught to keep on going all the way down to here and call that point slope. But I will be consistent with my math lab. My math lab likes you to keep that parentheses in there, so we'll go ahead and go with that for point slope. However, notice how easy it is to transform it into slope intercept. Slope intercept said, let's get rid of the parentheses. We did that there. And it said, get the y by itself. We did that right there. So this is going to be your slope intercept form because the y is by itself and the parentheses is gone. But notice how handy this is that when it comes to standard form, we've got to make sure the x and the y are together, but I don't even have an x. So could I say that the x and the y are together? Sure, because I don't have an x, so they can be together. And also, no fractions, no decimals. I don't have fractions and decimals anyways. So therefore, this is going to be slope-intercept and standard form all in the same shot. 
love it when that happens. That's really handy. So here's three examples of if you're given the slope, if you're given the point, just put that right into there, into that point slope form, and then all the translations can be very easy to do because it's just a matter of manipulating an equation. But now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a different situation where let's say that you're not given the slope. Let's say instead that you are told that this line passes through a couple of points. Let's say it passes through the point 3, negative 2, and the point 5, 1. Now remember, if I'm given um, two points, I can calculate the slope. So then I would have the slope and two points to choose from to put it into that point slope form. So that's how I'm going to start here. Um, regardless of whether you are working with your slope intercept form or your point slope form, notice both of them have the word slope in them. Slope intercept, point slope, i got to get the slope regardless. Now also notice the standard form. You never plug information into standard form. You never plug into here. You always plug into slope intercept or into point slope. You always rearrange into standard form, but you never plug into standard form. So I know that with this one, I definitely need to begin with calculating that slope. So let's go with my y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now remember, with the formula for slope, it does not matter the order you subtract the y's. Just make sure you go in the same order with the x's. So let's say that I, I want to go a negative 2 minus 1 on my y's. If I choose that order, I went this one minus this one, the x's have to go in the same order. So it'll be a 3 minus a 5. Now negative 2 minus 1 is a negative 3. 3 minus 5 is a negative 2. And negative 3 divided by negative 2 is a positive 3 halves. So there's the slope for that one. Now from there, I've got a slope and two points to choose from. I'm going to prove to you that it really doesn't matter which point you choose. So let's, um, in this case, choose the first one. Let's go with this. So I'm going to take that. That had the subscript off, so it reminds me it stays as a variable. This had the subscript off, so it reminds me that it stays as a variable. I'm going to put my negative 2 here for that y. I'm going to put my 3 here for the x. And I'm going to put my slope of 3 halves right here for the m. Now from here, what I'm going to do is that cleanup that I talked about. The subtracting a negative is really adding a positive. And so there we go. That's going to be my point slope form. Now if you would choose the other, um, the other point right here, then what would happen is you would again start off with your y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Subscript off of here tells me it stays as a variable. Subscript off of here tells me it stays as a variable. If I plug these numbers in, my y now becomes 1. My x now becomes 5. I'll have the same slope of 3 halves, but notice here there's no cleanup to be done. Right there, voila, in one step, there's my point slope form. The problem with this is if half the class chose this point, we would have this equation. If half the class chose that point, we would have this equation. You'd look up at the equation and you'd say there is no way these two are the same. It's not happening. But that's the beauty of transforming it into slope intercept and transforming it into standard form. If I take this and I transform it into slope intercept, remember I clear out the, the parentheses and I slide that two over. So if I clear out the parentheses first, what I'm going to have is a 3 has x, and remember, when I multiply those fractions, I'm going to put this 3 over 1, I'm going to cancel on the diagonals, but nothing will cancel, and I'll multiply straight across, and I'll get a negative 9 over 2. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide that 2 over and subtract it off, and then here I'm going to get those common denominators, and the common denominator here is going to be a negative 9 has minus 2 over 1, the common denominator is a 2. And so I take 1 and multiply it by 2, and I take 2 and multiply it by 2 and get a negative 4 halves. Combine those two up and I get a negative 13 halves. So there we go, that's slope intercept. Watch what happens when I try to transform this into slope intercept. Once again, I'm going to clear out those parentheses and multiply that through. 
Take that 3 halves, multiply it to the negative 5. When I multiply, I'm going to cancel those diagonals, but nothing will cancel, so I'm going to multiply straight across and get this. Now to get that um, y by itself, I'm going to add a 1 to both sides. And once again, I need to get that common denominator. So here I have a negative 15 over 2 plus 1 over 1. The common denominator is going to be a 2. 1 becomes 2 over 2. And yet again, I'm going to combine up those numerators. Negative 15 plus 2 is a negative 13. Keep that denominator. And so here's what I get for my slope intercept if I use the second point. But notice that what's circled in green here and what's circled in green here, they are exactly the same thing. That's the beauty of transforming it into that slope intercept form. So you can see that it really doesn't matter which of these two points that you choose. Both of them will get you to the same right answer once you do that transformation. Transformation. Sure, your point slope answer will look different, but again, that's why we translate it into this uh, slope intercept form. Now remember, last part of the direction said, let's put this in standard form. So I'm going to just work with this one because they're the same thing. And at this point, I'm going to clear out those fractions. Remember, that means I'm going to just multiply absolutely everything by that denominator to clear it out. So I get a 2y equal to 2 times 3 halves. The 2's will cancel, and I get a 3x. 2 times negative 13 over 2. Again, the 2's will cancel, and I get a negative 13. So I don't have any fractions or decimals. That's good. Now just get the x and the y together. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to subtract that 3x from both sides. That's a negative, that's a positive, keep the sign in front, and on this side, that's a negative. There we go, that's in standard form. So we've taken care of all three parts of the directions. All right, so let's practice this just a little bit more, try a couple more examples. And we're gonna try this time a situation where, again, we've got a line that passes through a couple of points, and we're gonna go with the point one, three, and the point 2, 4. And remember, when you are writing the equation on the line, you never plug into standard form. You always either plug into slope intercept form or point slope form, but either way, you've got to get the slope. So we're going to start off getting that slope. I'm going to subtract the y's on the numerator, subtract the x's on the denominator, and it does not matter the order you subtract the y's, so let's go 4 minus 3. But once you designate that order, you have to go in the same order with the x's. So we'll go 2 minus 1. Now 4 minus 3 is 1, 2 minus 1 is 1. I have a slope of 1 in this. Now I have a slope and two points to choose from. And remember, we just proved that it doesn't matter the point you choose. It makes no difference at all because eventually when you rearrange, you'll get to the same slope intercept form. So since I've got two points to choose from and a slope, I'm going to put it into that point slope form that looks like this. Remember, I took the subscript off of this one so it'll stay as a variable. Took the subscript off of this one so it'll stay as a variable. Let's say I pick the first point. That means that this 3 is going to go in the place of the y, this 1 is going to go in the place of the x, and my slope of 1 is going to go right here. Now, again, clean up. I don't really need to show that 1. And honestly, that means I don't even really need to show the parentheses. So here we go. This is going to be my point slope form the equation of the line. But now the direction said I need to transform it into the slope intercept, which may get the y by itself and get rid of the parentheses. Well, I don't even have a parentheses, so really all I have to do here is just get that negative 3 out of the way. So I'm going to add a 3 to both sides. That gives me y equals x, and then a negative 1 plus 3 is 2. Voila, in one step, I've got slope intercept form. And then remember the last part of the direction says, let's turn this into standard form. Standard form says let's get rid of the fractions and decimals. Sometimes, folks, you won't have fractions and decimals, so half your work is already done. A lot of when that happens, bam, it's gone. Now I'm going to get my x and my y together, so I'm going to slide this x over, subtract it off. Remember, the sign in front is the sign that goes. That name tag is negative, that name tag is positive, and this name tag is positive. There we go. Voila, standard form. There it is. So, let's take a look at some interesting situations that can happen here. One of those first interesting situations is whenever... Whenever you have something that looks like this... 
Notice here that one of those points is the origin. Whenever your line passes through the origin, some really cool stuff can happen. Now remember, if I'm writing the equation of the line, either way, whether I'm plugging in the slope intercept or, or point slope, I have to have a slope. So I definitely need to cal calculate the slope yet again on this one. And again, it doesn't matter whether you do the y, or which, what order you subtract the y's, just make sure you go in the same order for those x's. So let's do a negative 1 minus 0. And that means I'll do a 4 minus 0 on the denominator. Now, negative 1 minus 0 is a negative 1. 4 minus 0 is a 4. So I've got a slope of negative 1 fourth. Now I've got a slope of two points to choose from. We've already said, hey, it doesn't matter which point you choose. So if it doesn't matter which point I choose, game, make your job easy. Which of these two points would be the easiest to work with? Yeah, 0, 0 would be easiest to work with. So I'm going to plug that into this point slope form that you see right here. That's going to remain a variable, and that's going to remain a variable. So that means my x-coordinate will be, well, sorry, my y-coordinate will be 0. My x-coordinate will be 0. My slope of negative 1 fourth goes right here. The nice thing about this is, what's y minus 0? It's just a y. What's x minus 0? It's just an x. So there we go. There's that point slope form. Although, as I recall, my math lab wants you to stop with the parentheses. And again, I'll be consistent with my math lab, although I have no problems at all with going ahead and cleaning it up because this really is just a y and that really is just an x. And the other nice thing about it is when you go ahead and clean it up like this, notice that when I try to transform it into slope intercept and say get that y by itself and get rid of the parentheses, it's already been done. The parentheses is already gone, the y is already by itself, and voila, there is slope intercept. Now I just need to transform it into standard form, and remember that means no fractions and decimals, so I've got to clear out that fraction, multiply by its denominator to get rid of it, so that'll give me a 4y, and on this side, 4 times a negative 4, 1 fourth cancels out, and I get a negative 1x. Now I just need to get my x and my y together, so I'm going to slide this x over here, add it to the other side, name tag in the front, that's a positive y, name tag in the front, that's a positive 4y, and on this side, remember, if I, don't, if I take an x and subtract it out, I, these cancel out completely, I have a 0 on that side. It's okay to have a 0 on that side, not a problem at all. I've followed all the criteria for standard form, both of those are met, there's your standard form. So like I said, interesting things can happen whenever you've got um, a point, the origin being one of the points on that line. So now just a couple more examples so that, again, you can see some very interesting things that happen. Um, let's take, for instance, a situation, I think, where we've got the point 4, negative 3, and the point 3, negative 3. So again, I'm going to write the equation of the line, and so since I've got two points, I know that I've got to start off with calculating that slope. So I'm going to say, okay, subtract the y's on the numerator, subtract the x's on the denominator. Doesn't matter the order that you subtract the y's, and it really doesn't matter here because both of those y's are negative 3. So I'm going to do a negative 3 minus a negative 3, and with the x's, let's go 4 minus 3. Subtracting a negative is really adding a positive, so negative 3 plus 3 is 0, and on my denominator, 4 minus 3 is a 1. Remember, when 0 is in a numerator, what's your answer? Yeah, it's 0. 0 in a denominator gives you undefined. 0 in a numerator gives you 0. So here's my slope, and like we said before, if I've got a slope and two points to choose from, doesn't matter which point you choose, just pick one of them and plug it into that point slope form. So this is going to stay as a variable, and this is going to stay as a variable. Now, let's say that I pick the first point. It doesn't matter, just pick one. So this is going to be my x, this is going to be my y, and my slope is 0. Now, we've seen something like this before in one of the previous examples when that slope was 0. We said, well, let's clean this up. That's a y plus 3, and here's what we've got. And we said, and my math lab likes to retain the parentheses for point slope. But if you remember, we said, wow, this is easy to translate into slope-intercept because all i got to do is get rid of the parentheses. Well, 0 times anything at all is going to be a 0. 
So what I have is just a y plus 3 equals 0. And we said that's easy to get that y by itself. All we have to do is subtract the 3. So here we go. That's slope intercept. And then if you remember in that example, we said the nice thing about this is whenever we try to put it into that standard form, first off, I don't have any fractions or decimals. That's done. Second off, when I need to get the x and the y together, well, they're in an x anyways. So like we said before, well, if they're in an x, then just leave it alone. There it is. So this is going to be my standard form and slope intercept on the same shot, just like we had seen before. Now, the interesting thing about this one is um, notice that if I was to graph those two lines on the 2D coordinate plane, let's go ahead and get this out. Put them on the 2D coordinate plane. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. Here's 4, negative 3. And then here's 3, negative 3. Notice that when I connect those two, what type of line is that? Yeah, that's a horizontal line. Now, if you remember the skier that I had told you about, that I remember the skier on this horizontal line, what was the skier doing? And if you remember, the skier was sleeping. And those Z's meant that we had zero slope on a horizontal line. So notice here that when we plot those two points on the 2D coordinate plane and it creates a horizontal line, it better have zero slope, which is exactly what we had calculated here, a zero slope. And if you remember, on this horizontal line, notice that all the y values of every single point on there has to be a negative 3. Well, how do you write y has to be negative 3? Right there. y has to be a negative 3. So this is the equation that represents that line. Remember here, x can be anything. And that's what this equation says. There's not an x in there, so it could be anything. But I've got to guarantee that that y is a negative 3. And that's what this equation means, and that's what that line means. So this is what happens whenever you've got um, two points where you've got a situation where the y is the same. Now, I'm going to put this up here because I want to refer to it here in just a minute again. And let's take a look at another example. Now, in this last example, pick a little g now, uh, it's going to go through the point 5, 2, and through the point 5, negative 3. Now, something really crazy happens here. I know, again, that I'm going to have to calculate that slope. And I know that I'm going to subtract my y's in any order that I want. Doesn't matter. Just make sure I go in the same order on those x's. But the x's are the same, so it kind of doesn't matter. Now, negative 3 minus 2 is a negative 5. If I would have flipped it around and done a, a 2 minus a negative 3, I would have got a positive 5. But either way, I've got 5 minus 5 in the denominator. That's a 0. And remember, when 0 is in the denominator, then your answer is undefined. 0 in the numerator is 0, but 0 in the denominator is undefined. So now, I need to write the equation of the line. And I'm going to use my point slope form. This stays as a variable because I took the subscript off. That stays as a variable because I took the subscript off. So now pick either point you want. And it looks like this will be the easiest to use because there's no negatives in there. So I'm going to put the 5 here for the x. I'm going to put the 2 here for the y. And that slope, well, here's where it gets weird. My slope is undefined. And how on earth am I going to handle that word right here in that formula? It can't be done. But I have to write the equation of the line. So how am I going to write the equation of the line when I can't fit that word in there? Well, the only option that I've got is to go back here and take a look at the two points that I've got up here. What do you notice about those two points? Right. Notice that both of those x's are 5. The y's are changing, but the x has to be a 5. And like I said before, how do you write x has to be 5? Certainly, x has to be 5. And that's the equation of that line. That's the equation in point slope form. That's the equation in slope intercept form. Because remember, in slope intercept form, it says get that y by itself. Well, I don't even have a y in there, so I can't get the y by itself. And this is going to be standard form because standard form says, well, get the x and the y together. And if I don't have a y, they have to be together. And it says no fractions and decimals. Well, I don't have fractions and decimals, so it's okay. So this is point slope, slope intercept, and standard form all in the same shot. Now let's take a look at this one in the 2D coordinate plane. 
if we were to graph this one, 5, 2 sits here, 5, negative 3 sits here, and if we connect those two, what type of line is that? Yes, that is a vertical line. And if you remember the skier, remember on that vertical line, as morbid as it is, what happened here was the skier falling off the cliff. That meant that he was going to be undefined in the end. So if you remember, that meant that all vertical lines have an undefined slope. And remember that when we calculated the slope, it was undefined. That's exactly what we got. So this being a vertical line, it's going to have an undefined slope. And if you remember, on this vertical line, notice that all of these x-coordinates are 5. The y-values are changing all over the place, but I have to guarantee that that x is a 5. And like we said before, how do you write x has to be 5? Right there, x has to be 5. So this is the only equation that will represent that line. Okay, so the last thing that we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at some applications for this. And I've got two applications to show you. One application deals with some business uh, situations. And what this application does is it says we've got a printer. And the printer charges $65 to print 100 copies. of a booklet. And it charges $105 to print 500 copies of that booklet. And we want to know that the relationship is linear. between the number of copies and the cost is linear. That's very important. If it's not linear, we can't do this. And since we know that we want to write an equation two situations going on. One situation is that we are being charged $65 for 100 copies, and the second situation is that we are being charged $105 for 500 copies. The cost is Y and the copies is X. So basically we're going to be able to set up a relationship, and remember I've told you that ordered pairs are simply relationships, that's all they are. So in my first relationship it says, well, for the number of copies being 100, I'm going to be charged $65 and that's my cost, which is going to be Y. And then in our second situation, it says, okay, for 500 copies, which is X, I'm going to be charged $105, which is going to be my Y. So notice what I have here is two points. So if I want to write an equation that relates that cost with the number of copies, I've got two points to use, and then I can utilize my point slope form the equation of a line, just like we've been doing all along. So I know that I'm going to need to calculate that slope from the beginning. I'm going to subtract my y's on my numerator. I think the easiest thing to do would be 105 minus 65. And if I go 105 minus 65, I have to go in the same order on the x's, 500 minus 100. 100 minus 65 is 40, and 500 minus 100 is 400, and that will simplify to 110. So there's my slope of 110. Now I need to be able to write the equation, and I've got two points to choose from and a slope, and we've already proven it doesn't matter which point you choose. So I'll go with the first one, like I always do, and I'll say y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. That y stays as a variable, this x stays as a variable. 
So if I choose the first one, my y coordinate's going to be 65, my x coordinate's going to be 100, and my slope is going to be 110. And if the directions don't say anything about translating, there's no cleanup to be done because I don't have any subtracting or negative, there we go. That's going to be my equation in point slope. Now, just for good measure, because it's good practice, let's go ahead and translate that into slope-intercept form. Remember, slope-intercept says, let's go ahead and distribute this through. So when I transform that into slope-intercept, I'll have a y minus 65. And then when I multiply it through 1 tenth times x, it's going to be 1 tenth x. And 1 tenth times 100 is going to be a negative 10. And then I'm going to add a 65 to both sides in order to get that y by itself. So I get a 1 tenth x plus 55. And that's going to be my slope intercept form. And again, for good measure, let's just go ahead and translate that into standard form. Remembering the standard form means get the x and the y together and clear out those fractions. So to clear out the fractions, I'm just going to multiply everything through by 10. That will give me 10y equals x plus 550. And then all I have to do at that point is simply subtract that x off. When I do, I'm going to put this right up here because I'm running out of room, I get a negative x because the sign in front is the sign that goes. This is a negative x and a positive 10y. And then on the other side, I have a positive 550. So there it is in standard form. So that gives you one application for writing um, an equation of the line, and particularly using that point slope form. Um, it's, a, it's a great application. So that's a, a business application, but I know that there's a lot of people who are medically inclined. So I've got another application that's going to deal with medicine. And in this one, we're looking at blood pressure. And blood pressure tends to increase with age, which I can certainly attest to. That's huh, starting to happen. Anyways, let's suppose that the normal blood pressure of a 20-year-old is 120, and that of a 50-year-old is 135. And if the increase is at a constant rate, and that's very important that it's a constant rate, because if it's a constant rate, that, that indicates it's linear. And um, for it to be linear, then it would be the graph of a line, and we can write the equation of a line. Remember, point slope, slope intercept, standard form, they are all equations for lines. So it needs to have a, a steady increase. The steady increase is going to be a linear slope. But if that's the case, we want to write an equation relating the age, which we'll call x, to the normal blood pressure which we'll call y. So yet again we have a couple of situations like in the last one. And the situation says that if I'm given um, a age of 20, that's x, then that 20 year old has a blood pressure of 120 and that's my y. And then in a similar situation, I've got a 50-year-old, there again the age is x, blood pressure is going to be 135, and that again is a y. So here again, I've got two points, and I can write the equation of the line because I can get the slope, and then I can use the slope in one of the two points. So let's calculate that slope, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And I'll do 135 minus 120, just because it's probably the easiest way to go. 
And if I do this point, then minus this point, the x's have to go in the same order, 50 minus 20. So 135 minus 20, 120 is going to be 15, and 50 minus 20 is going to be 30. That simplifies to 1 half. So there's my slope, and I've got two points to choose from. So I'm going to pick one of the two points, and we've already proven it doesn't matter which one we choose. This will stay as a variable because there's no subscript. This will stay as a variable because there's no subscript. And I'll do my usual and pick that first point. So the y becomes a negative, or uh, sorry, becomes a 120, the x becomes a 20, and my slope of 1 half goes right in here. Notice there's no cleanup to be done, so bam, right there is point slope. And again, for good measure, good practice, let's just go ahead and translate it into slope intercept and standard form. The directions don't say you have to do that, but I'm going to go ahead and do it just to practice. So slope intercept, I'm going to distribute it through to get rid of that parentheses. And so when I do, I get 1 half times x is a 1 half x, and 1 half times negative 20 is going to be a negative 10. And then to get the y by itself, I'm simply going to add a 120. So I get y equals 1 half x plus 110. The y is by itself. I have no parentheses in there. They're slope intercept. And again, for good measure, let's just go ahead and put it into standard form. So I'm going to clear out that fraction. I'm going to multiply everything by that denominator to clear it out. So that will give me 2 times y is 2y, because remember, every single term is going to be multiplied by that 2. 2 times 1 half clears out, and 2 times 110 is 220. And now I'm just going to slide that x over, subtract it off. And remember, the name tag in front of the x is negative, the name tag in front of the y is positive, and the name tag in front of the constant is positive. There we go. We've got no fractions, no decimals, the x and the y are together. So that is my standard form. So that is how you write equations of lines whenever you're given a point and a slope or given two points. All you got to do is take the two points, calculate the slope, and then remember you can use either of the two points. It doesn't matter because once you translate it into slope-intercept, they'll both come to the same spot. All right. Have a good day.